Uh, hello, everybody, and I am so excited to be here today um, and so pleased to have been invited. Um, I'm excited to meet all of you. Uh, Technovation is such a fabulous experience, and, and um, I'm vicariously excited for you going through it. Um, before I get started, I'd love to hear, you know, I'm here today to talk about um, uh, what makes a great pitch, and I'd love to hear if any of you have particular challenges in mind when you think about pitching. Um, maybe, for example, your biggest challenge when it comes to pitching is you feel nervous, or maybe it's that you're worried you won't know what to say, or uh, maybe it's actually designing the presentation. If you could put in the chat if you have a particular challenge that comes to mind, um, it would be great for me to see. In the meantime, I'll introduce myself uh, really quickly. So um, my background, I worked at Google for a while. I also worked in startups for a while, founded my own startup. Um, I spent a few fabulous years with uh, Technovation and I ran a startup accelerator and got to hear lots of entrepreneurs pitch and uh, give their presentations. And then most recently I joined as a startup partnerships lead at Stripe. So I'm delighted to still get to work with lots of investors and startups in my day to day. First of all, I want to say congratulations to you on, on being here because you are truly learning what skills, the skills that it takes to make a difference in the world, being, you know, ideating, building, and then really communicating your ideas. And I can say from my experience, having heard many, many pitches over the years, that a great pitch really does make all the difference. Um, also, I would say pitching for, you know, later stage companies and for early stage companies is very different. In later stage companies, they already have users, they already have numbers they can share, they have data, they have statistics. But in the very early stages, many entrepreneurs I work with are, have been in the very early stages, as all of you are, it's really more of an art than a science. Unfortunately, there's no like specific formula that makes your pitch fabulous that you can use because giving a pitch at the early stage is really a matter of inspiring the people who are listening to you and making them feel inspiration. And there's just no real formula for that. Giving a pitch at this stage is about illustrating your dream and bringing the listeners along with you to understand how the world will be a better place when you get through. So um, with that said, I've come up with um, five qualities that in my opinion have made great pitches over the course of the years. And uh, they all happen to start with the letter S, which was not intentional. It just sort of happened that way. So I have five S's <laughs> to share with you. The first is story. I've heard entrepreneurs give pitches where it's just sort of a list of facts. And in my experience, that doesn't resonate very well. The more you can make your pitch sound like a story, you can tell a story about a real person who's benefited from your app. The more your pitch feels like a story, the more compelling it will be. And the more you'll be able to convey the dream and listeners will hear that. Um, with respect to that, you know, one strategy that I've seen people use successfully is to give specific examples. A lot of times users will give, or uh, entrepreneurs will give an example of a specific person who has used their app and then talk about how that person's life changed as a result of using that app. It doesn't have to be in a big way. Maybe their life didn't change forever as a result of using the app, but even if it's in a small way, they were able to do something quicker or um, more uh, effectively than they were before, giving a specific exam example, including like that person's name and a little bit of background about them and why it mattered that they were able to do something better um, makes a huge, huge difference. So first thing, think about the story. Second is scale. Um, so once you've given an example of a particular person whose life was changed because of your app, it's nice to demonstrate that there are a lot more people like that <laughs> who have the same problem. Um, so there are a couple of ways to do this. Number one is to, to think up some numbers. Now, a lot of times people don't know exactly how many people are, there are in the world that would be able to use their particular app. But what entrepreneurs typically do is make kind of an educated guess. They'll do some Googling and try to, try to guess, um, you know, if, if their app is for, let's say, I don't know, girls in the United States, they might look up online, figure out how many girls there are in the United States between the ages that they're targeting and use that as a number to demonstrate how many more people there are, like the example that they gave. A second way of showing scale is by using partnerships. So some entrepreneurs might think of organizations that would be good to partner with that then would be able to help distribute their app. So for example, um, if you were building an app for dog owners, then you might have a, a conversation with a local humane society and see if there's a possibility of using their distribution channels to get your app through. Um, 
And that's another strategy to demonstrate that you're really thinking about scale and able to show that there are a lot more people like, like the story you already described who would be able to use it. My third S is sound and visual. Now this one's a little bit boring, but super, super important. I don't know how many of you have ever been on a call with someone where you couldn't quite hear what they were saying or couldn't quite see them that well and you spend all your time sort of listening and trying to pay attention and that is not what you want your listeners thinking about when you're trying to inspire them. And so, you know, it's a little boring, but if you can just make sure that your microphone is working well and that your uh, camera works well, it makes all the difference in the world to be able to inspire the people that you're talking to. So give it a test run a few times before you actually present your pitch and, and make sure that, that it works out. Um, number four is just a solid presentation. Now, pitching well is not easy. <laughs> um, startup founders I know practice over and over um, you know, before they, they actually present their pitches. Um, some of them have practiced you know, five or 10 or 20 times or 50 times before they give their presentation. Now, I don't know if those numbers are realistic in this situation, but if you can give your pitch to your mom or your dad or your cousin or your uncle in advance of doing it in front of the real presentation, um, then you know, the more you practice, the more polished your pitch will be and the more ready you'll be. Now, this is not easy. I know for me, I've always felt a little bit shy to ask family members or friends to listen to my pitch, but it really is part of the growing experience. And if you can do it, then it will help you grow and um, make your pitch better in the long run. And then five is, uh, I call it sense of humor, but what I really mean is the ability to make your, your listener smile, even just a little bit. Um, it, doesn't have, it doesn't mean you need to like tell lots of jokes in your presentation or anything along those lines, but if you're able to bring out a little bit of a smile, it's a one way to relate to your listener and help them see you more as a human and uh, help them you know, appreciate the, the dream you're trying to illustrate. So those are my five S's for uh, thinking about a fantastic pitch. But the most important thing of all is to really feel proud of yourself. Um, you know, when you're done with your pitch, no matter how it went, you will have achieved something pretty amazing afterwards. And I want to make sure that all of you feel an appropriate and, and proportional sense of accomplishment because pitching is not easy and just going through it is a part of the process. I will also say that we all make mistakes when pitching. You know, I've certainly uh, give, given pitches and presentations a number of times. And, um, you know, some of them I feel proud of. And some of them, when I look back, I think, oh, I wish I had, I wish I had done that one a little bit differently. Even some of the ones I've done in front of hundreds of people. And I would say, just keep in mind that no matter how it goes, you will come out the other side of your pitch smarter and more accomplished than you were before. So don't beat yourself up if it doesn't go exactly precisely perfectly. Um, you know, just getting through it is, is a huge accomplishment. Thank you so much, Samantha. That was great. I love the five S's. It makes it a little easier to remember. Uh, you know, what are the what are the great things to hit on when you're pitching? So that was that was great. I just learned a lot from what you shared. Appreciate it. So quick reminders: there are two videos that you're going to submit when you're uh, we come to the deadline on April 26th. And the first is a demo video. I'm not going to go over that today, but just briefly wanted to tell you it's a two minute video max. You'll see information about this in the curriculum. And you'll be able to show viewers how your project works and what future features you're actually planning to add to implement on in your app or your AI solution. That'll be your demo video. Today, we're focusing on pitch video, four minutes max. And then what you're doing in the pitch video is showing viewers why the problem is important. And I see that the words have left the screen here, but also how you're planning to solve that problem. Um, so that's the pitch video. And as Samantha said, you're going to want to hit on a couple different points in that video. Um, you're going to want to make sure that um, you're going to want to make sure that viewers are able to understand the scope and scale of your problem. You're going to want to be able to drum up some excitement about the solution that you've designed and the importance of that solution. Um, so there are a couple tips we're going to share with you about uh, how to convey that urgency of the issue. So making a convincing pitch. Judges are going to review a couple different things when you submit to the competition, the project description, your learning journey, which is really important, the pitch video and the demo video. 
Junior teams will also be scored on the user adoption plan and senior division on the business plan. So the pitch actually will inform scores in all of these areas. Um, so you're going to want to help your team in the pitch to convey the urgency of the problem. How important is this issue that you're trying to solve? Why is it important? And why will your solution be uh, uh, helpful in solving that problem? You're going to want to cover user feedback and how that affected your project, how you actually asked people about how they might use your app and how that helped you design and redesign certain things and explain future goals for your project. And remember to be passionate. I love the point Samantha shared about adding a little humor or really just maybe not even humor, but getting that smile on the faces of the people that are listening. That'll help, help them to remember your pitch um, and remember the app that you app or AI solution that you've created. Wonderful. Okay, so we're ready to get started practicing pitching.